Good evening and welcome to another exciting episode of the Pilot Review Show. I am Captain Blade J52 and I am joined by my merry cohorts. We have this week with us the teacher of the Kirby variety. Hey, hey, hey. Who is the crazy chick dancing on the Dabo table? Yes. I'm always the crazy chick. Not surprising. And we also have our resident Neela Deton with us this evening. What up, all? Howdy ho. Our resident uh, RP Hologram already will not be joining us this evening. He is planning a 4th of July party, but hopefully we'll have him back this next week for more shenanigans and everything. But anyways, we've got quite a bit of stuff to get through this week and news for you guys, so let's go ahead and dive right into everything. Now the first big thing we have is the Multi-Mission Explorer bundle that is coming to the consoles. Now for those people out there that loved the Vestas or may even on console have purchased the Tier 5 versions, you will now have access to the Tier 6 versions that uh, are coming your guys' way. This is a pack of nine ships, assuming you buy the Mega Bundle and everything. You get um, all three Starfleet variants, all three KDF variants, and all three Romulan variants. Now, it should be noted that the Romulan and KDF variants are new, as there were not originally any Tier 5 versions of the multi-missions for KDF or Romulan. But... Um, you can kind of see what some of them look like and everything. I think they give... They do give some stats for each one. We'll pick, um, pick the Starfleet version of the Strategic. Everything. For the Starfleet Strategic, you start out at 32,775 hull at level 50. You get 38,000 hull at level 60. This is base hull, keep in mind. Shield uh, Strength Modifier of 1.4, it is a 3-3 layout, 3 device slots, you get a Lieutenant Tactical Seat, Lieutenant Commander Engineering, a Commander Science, Ensign Universal, and a Lieutenant Commander Universal slash Temp Ops. So, very flexible bridge officer seating. Then you get 4 Tactical Consoles, 3 Engineering, and 4 Science, with a base turn rate of 12 then you also do get the subsystem targeting, the sensor analysis, and secondary deflectors. It does have one hangar bay as well. Then you also get the console, the omnidirectional tachyon wave siphon, as well as plus 10 to shield and aux power. And you get the science vessel mastery package. And then some of the major differences versus the KDF is basically slightly higher hull numbers starting out. And then I think the Romulans... Yep, the Romulans get a slightly different hull rating, a little bit lower at level 50, a little bit lower shield strength, but for the most part the strategic ships are pretty much the same, aside from some minor differences. But um, you can kind of see one of the consoles in action there. That is the, I think that's the Tachyon Wave Siphon there. But um, there's a lot of stuff we could go into with these particular ships. I'm just going to kind of be glancing over the stats with the camera and everything. But um, thoughts from our panel on these uh, particular ships? Oh, these are excellent, excellent. And the fact that they're cross-faction. Um, you know, KDF and Romulan just have a severe lack of science ships, and this, while it doesn't go a long way, at least it's starting to, uh, give you something to close that gap. You were a little Man. robotic there for a second, Kirby. Okay. Did you hear everything? Yeah. You yeah. heard everything, but yeah. Oh, okay. Meh. Who needs a science ship for KDF? Just go Carfi all the way. You'll be fine. Of course ah. he would say that. I know, right? Mm hmm Science rules. Yep. And it is... Uh, and that's so. why I'm on a science character for the Carfi, so... Also, fair warning, folks. <laughs> um, 
If any of us sound robotic at any point, at any time, it has been storming where uh, Teacher Kirby is at and everything, so that is one thing to be aware of. But anyway, I'm yep. still kind of scrolling down to show off some of the stats. But, um, these look like pretty good ships overall, I believe. And that's the ISO yeah, they are. dispersal array. Very flexible ships. Um, nice science heavy, which really the KDF and the Romulan side have been lacking. Um, I do think they did a good job with these. So yeah. Indeed. I like them. But so. In case anybody sees this later on, I know there's a lot more than just the ship that I went over and gave the stats for and everything. Because there are actually so many different ships in this bundle that you could potentially get, we could spend easily 30-40 minutes on just this one blog. So, I figured just go over the one ship, kind of give you an idea for it, and then we can go from there as far as anything else goes. We will have this in the notes for you guys. I highly encourage you to check this out because these are some very potent science ships and everything, especially here on the PC. And even their Tier 5 variants for the Vestas still hold up today. So, very, very great ships. You guys will not be disappointed if you're a science fan and everything. But, anyways, moving right along. Moving right along. <laughs> do, 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 do. We have the Kobayashi Maru <laughs> event on the PC. Yes. So those of us who have been waiting for No One's Mary to come back, we do... And the original No One scenario, the Kobayashi Maru. So uh, it actually, it's very nice. It does start out with the... Um, with the line from the movie Wrath of Khan. This is the Kobayashi Maru, 19 periods out of Altair 6. We have struck a gravitic mine and have lost all power. Our hull is penetrated and we have sustained many casualties. It's first thing you hear when it starts up, it is great. Very nostalgic to hear the original sound from the. But, uh, Lord, yeah, that, it's... Uh, roboticness. <laughs> you went on Robo Kirby for better? a minute. Okay. I think you're good for but, a moment. Uh, I think what you were saying? So this is reminiscent of Arena of Sompec, but it's now for space. And uh, you do have to get... Um, you have to go through rounds the better the rewards and the harder it gets so um there are forms timed and untimed if you take the timed one once you reach 15 minutes in it will finish the match and that's it if you take untimed it'll let you go as long as you want uh, the fail conditions are the or all of the team members die at the same time so, other than that, it's uh, lots of fun, and you can, of course, it is a weekend event, so you can get the, what do you call it, the weekend event vouchers to earn prolonged engagement beam array or phaser dual cannons. They're both energy weapons and they become stronger the longer that your ship is in combat. They're very interesting. And let me tell you, we've uh, You're going been doing to some tests with them. Super hard right now. Am I still intelligible? Somewhat. <laughs> okay. But anyway, you were doing some testing. <laughs> yeah, we've been doing some testing, and they look. Uh, very nice. So it looks like the it stacks up to 25 stacks of the uh, of the damage increase 
and uh, it does give you haste every stacks. So very nice. Looks to be a. I think it's going to be a very nice weapon, a very good one. And the fact that it's uh, basically a free weapon is a good thing. So remember, go out there. All you have to do is do it on one character on your account, and then claim it through the deck for all the other characters. And there you go. Yep. Another thing you to mention until... is if you haven't started it, you probably won't be able to finish it because it ends at 9, yeah, yeah. 9 a.m. PST on Monday. Yes, on July 3rd. Yep. But, um, anyways, for me personally, I'm definitely looking forward to this. I mean, free stuff is always nice, especially something of this magnitude. But if you're somebody that's definitely been working towards this, I definitely see the beam being worth it and everything. And am I the only one that wants the other alternative nacelles on that Kobayashi Maru? <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. I'm normally not a Space Barbie okay. person, but I don't know. I just I want those nacelles. Yeah, I'm not either. But, so, anyways, we will have the blog for you guys so you can check that out. <coughs> oh, God. Oh, sorry, okay, I got strangled for a minute. But, um, anyways, I was going to say before I just about strangled myself, we'll have that in the notes for you guys. You can check that out. I highly encourage you folks to, um, if you've been doing your stuff, to finish it out. Because they don't usually give stuff of this magnitude away like this all that often. But anyways, moving along, we at have. The very hang on. Oh, go hang ahead. On. I, I was gonna say at the very least, even if you think you can't finish it, slot it, because one of the things we did find out, people that had leftover weekend vouchers from the arena of Sompek were able to use them in this project so you may be able to the next time they do a weekend event like this use the weekend vouchers from that event to finish off this one and still be able to finish yeah the new one so yeah so still be, and still be able to finish the new one because you can get what up to five Yep, I believe. It starts on Thursday. Yeah. Normal. Okay. Yeah. But anyways, we will have that in the notes for you guys, so you can check out the blog and whatnot. But, moving right along, we have the Mirrors and Smoke Week 4 Rewards for the console. Yep, yep. yep. So, we are at week four of Mirrors and Smoke for Xbox and PS4. Last week was the Kentari Fortified Personal Shield. Today is the, or uh, this week is the final reward of Mirrors and Smoke, the Kentari Partisan Residium Thrower. Uh, doing the mission of this week also for the account will grant you universal tech upgrade or a spec point uh, of your choice. The we we reward box tech upgrade and spec point will be bound to account so you can just trade in between your characters. The Kentari Partisan Resetting Thrower, it will count towards the excessive development set, which we talked about this last Saturday, so not much we uh, need to go, go over it again, but the two piece gets you the Kentari Armor and Shield Pen, Shield Gain, for a 12.5% chance to 10 hit points. Uh, 20% plasma damage, and then three pieces that the reactive deployment, which is basically a 
Colin Bob Bowman a plasma residium reactant and then once it's there you detonate it for a nice big boom. As the guy from Atlantis uh, used to say. <laughs> That's a big boom. Yeah, definitely a great little set. I know I used it on my recent tune that I leveled. And the one thing I didn't actually do too awful much with was the plasma weapon, because I had one of the levelless weapons from a pack, but once I did get the plasma weapon to the higher levels, that thing was just nasty. But, uh, any thoughts from you, Kirby, on this uh, really quick? Uh, it's, uh, it is a good, um, a good set. I really liked it. It is good, of course, with your lower level tunes. You can use it and get the free upgrades to, uh, to Mark 12, so... Always a good thing to do if you can get it on those lower level tunes. Indeed. But, anyways, we will have this in the notes for you guys. You can check out the blog if you would like. Definitely encourage you guys to go out there and at least get your universal tech upgrade or your spec point, because that is a very nice thing to have. But, moving along, J.G. Hertzler joins the cast of Star Trek Online. As we see here, apparently from the blog, he is going to be coming back as Martok. Everything. And we also have a brief interview with uh, J.G. Hertzler that Ambassador Kale did and everything. The article actually links to it on YouTube, so you guys will be able to check that out as well. So, basically, as the blog asks, where has he been for the last 18 years? That raises the question. But, um, J.G. Hertzler was uh, very uh, well-beloved character in the DS9 series and uh, whatnot, but um, yeah, I'm definitely excited to see what he brings to the table for this and everything and how they say Martok has been alive or all that goodness, but anyway, thoughts from our panel? It's Martok. <laughs> Yay! Cry havoc and let's slip the dogs of war. Dogs of war. Yeah. No, I mean, Martok has been one of the characters that, you know, at least in my Teen Speak, we've always talked about, oh, I'd like Martok to come back, and then someone goes, oh, but he's been dead. How would they do that? Well, now we'll find out how. <laughs> so. Yeah, pretty much. All I gotta say, though, is I have a feeling Jim Park's in for a rude awakening. Yeah. I would say that. Or I get yeah. distinct feeling for me personally that, and I was actually discussing this with Kirby at some point, that there may have been some kind of backroom deal that went on, such as Jim Pock assumed the Chancellorship, and in order to get Martok out of there, they pretty much, quote-unquote, killed him in a duel and everything, and mainly because they saw some bigger threat to the Empire on the horizon. Now, I don't know that that's how they're going to spin it. That's how I personally would have spun it, if it was me. But, so... Uh, we'll definitely be well, looking forward to this. I point you on that to the next blog. So the next blog is our Season 13.5 comes to PC on July 18th. So not only do we get our brand new Endeavor system, which we've talked about in previous episode, and the brand new Admiralty campaign featuring the Latinum hunting efforts of the Ferengi, again, which we talked about in previous episodes, but we also get a new episode, Brushfire. So in Brushfire, our new featured episode, Players will be contacted by legendary Klingon General Rodek, voiced by Tony Todd. He's found a secret prison 
run by the Sona, the alien race from Star Trek Insurrection, and needs your help to rescue a special prisoner. That prisoner, captains will come to learn, is former Martok. So there you go. In a prison run by the Robot. Sona. Attack of the Robo Kirby's. Attack of the Robo Kirby's. All right. So somehow Martok ended up in a prison run by the Sona. So there we go. How that happened, we don't know. We'll have to learn by playing the episode. Mm hmm. Yep. Alright, and other than that, we have our new Endeavor system, which offers new challenges every day, and our new Admiralty campaign, which, of course, gives you a way to earn EC, Latinum, and Dilithium. Remember, rule of acquisition number 18. A Ferengi without profit is no Ferengi at all. Indeed. Comments? Questions? Yes. I personally, for the Ferengi Admiralty campaign, or Admiralty, as I like to say, just to annoy you, is... There it is! There it is! I'm honestly... Yes. I knew they would bring out more campaigns, though I'm surprised that since we already have the Federation campaign which can give a pretty good chunk of dilithium and everything. I'm honestly surprised that they gave us another one like that. Klingon. Or Klingon camp, whichever one it is. Federation Klingon. Federation spec points Klingon dilithium. Yep. Thank you. But, uh, anyway, whichever one of that bunch it is, the Klingon, the Feds, the whoever, everything, I'm honestly <laughs> surprised they brought in a second one that gives a pretty good dilithium reward at the end of it. I did not think they would do that. So, it will be interesting to see what they do with this Admiralty campaign. Any comments, Neela? Not really. But I'm just waiting for it to uh, launch just to get a better understanding of it. It is on Tribble if you wanted to test it out. Yeah, no. That is true. <laughs> for, for, st for small stuff like this, I don't really like to test it. I'm just like, eh. But if it's like, if, if it's something bigger, then I would test it. But anyways, we will have this in the notes for you guys. You can check out this blog if you would like. It is over on Tribble at the moment, some of this stuff, if you'd like to check it out. But, uh, anyways, moving along, we have the Mark's Weekend for the console. Yep, from the start of this Thursday, the 29th of June, and it goes until this Monday at 10 a.m. PST, where everyone on console will be able to get, uh, bonus marks for playing any content throughout the game. Content that provides fleet, fleet or reputation will reward 50%, 1.5 time bonus above no amounts. It's available for all content that rewards the marks, including the three new reputations that came with console with 8 tenths of yesterday. Captain, oh, work on your fleet projects and reputation. you're looking to farm out some marks, maybe you need some extra stuff for your fleet, maybe some stuff for those reputations, it's definitely a good time to get out there and farm those marks out. But, uh, anyways, not really too much we can say about that, I don't guess. But, um, anyways, we will have the blog all the same for you guys, if you'd like to read it and everything. 
But moving right along, we have the PC patch notes for the 29th. This was this past Thursday. You can see not really a lot to them. Everything, they brought in the Kobayashi Maru event. Played the Federation's ultimate test as a limited time challenge for all captains level 50 plus. Play a 15 minute timed version or an untimed version for greater challenges and rewards. In addition to standard to lithium and R&D rewards, playing at least once a day for three days will unlock the special reward. We already went over that earlier. And then for the general, resolved clipping issues with the female versions of the summer shirts and wetsuits. Added weekend events to the calendar for July, and the hull repairing nanite's reputation trait tooltip has been changed to more accurately display its functionality. It is purely a cosmetic thing and does not change its overall effectiveness. Thank now, God for the complete issues on the summer shirts. That was rage inducing. <laughs> like I said, not really a lot to this particular set of notes and everything. They did do a second patch the next day, sort of an emergency hotfix, whatever you want to call it, and everything, and we do have the notes for that. Everything coming up on the, the second one. 30th. Let's see. Uh... Anyways, for this particular one, basically changes to the Kobayashi Maru rewards and some fixes with that. Resolved an issue where the prolonged engagement weaponry would not unlock for characters on an account where one character had completed the project to unlock the weapons. Newly acquired versions of the prolonged weaponry will come at ultra rare instead of very rare. Existing versions will not be altered, however, when put in the upgrade system, they will convert to ultra rare automatically. The prolonged engagement weaponry now have four and eight damage modifiers instead of two and that will change uh, existing weapons and then the prolonged engagement weapons are set to character bound as intended so in a nutshell for those of you that were wondering where's my account wide unlock this was supposed to affix that and if you were wondering well why are these not bound to character well now we have the answer but so. Not really a lot to anything this week. Anything for you guys in particular? Um, well, the one thing I noticed is that they have... The prolonged engagement weapons now have four and eight damage modifiers. Instead of two, that's... Whoa. That's really good. Yes, yes, it is. That's really, really good, yeah. So, wow. And then, okay, they come at ultra rare instead of very rare. That's that's nice, but not a huge thing. I can see that. As well. Yeah. And I am glad that they've uh, resolved the, um, the unlock for the account unlock for the weapons, because that can be very frustrating. But yeah. Now these definitely fix the bugs that were uh that were uh, with Holy the Robo rewards Kirby's. for sure. I think I think she's alive. Okay. I'm alive There it goes. Okay. Anyways, moving along Better? to the next big thing, we have the 20% pack sale on PC. I think we missed something. We missed one. We missed, we missed a story blog. Story blog? Are you taking yep. the test? Did I not have that one? Yep. Okay, apparently well, I did not have that he's trying to one. find it. Well, he's trying to find it. I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you all about it. So, uh... Basically, this tells the story of a captain who finds out that they're retaking the test and is understandably quite nervous. 
So it goes through her story of the first time when she was an Academy cadet, the first time she took the test, and uh, it's a very interesting story. There we go. So yeah, it's definitely worth a read, and uh, tells how even the Klingons are getting a shot at it, which uh, <laughs> they're saying should be interesting. But yeah, so it's basically our RP for why it is we're doing the weekend event with the Kobayashi Maru. It's a very interesting read and definitely have a crack at it. Have you guys read it at all? I did not get a chance to, no, sadly. Ah, oh. I, I did. Uh, I, I like when they do these blogs for either the weekend events or new missions or stuff like that that they come mm -hmm. out with. It makes it more personable. Yeah, it does. I can kind of see that, I guess. But, anyways, we don't really want to spoil too much for you guys and everything. Yeah. That's, um... I, I know, tried not to. I know whenever we talk about the RP blogs, we don't really say a lot about them, but... And we understand that there's some people out there that would rather read it for themselves, so aside from giving away just very, very basic stuff that's not going to spoil the story, we try to leave as much for you guys as we can. But, um, yeah, after my derpily do of missing that one, anyway. But um, And it is also apparently the first story blog written by Ambassador Kale. Interesting. Yes. yes, remember. Yes, I do remember. Yes. <laughs> it, might, it might be that down there. But someone else might wrote it. No, he's he was uh, quite proud of it. He did mention it. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Well, I'll definitely give this a read then, because that should be interesting, knowing how, uh, knowing how, uh, some of Kale's exploits yes. are. But, so. Uh, will be interesting to see what, uh, ah. he came up with. But, anyways, now, finally, we will have this in the notes for you guys, by the way, now that I've actually got it pulled but up this time. Before I move on, I challenge... Did you find the sentence that made me have an aneurysm? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if I can't do that after the show. In there. But, uh, yeah. Anyways, all jokes aside, like I say, we will have this in the notes for you guys. You can check this out. I highly encourage you guys to check out the RP blogs and everything because they're usually pretty good reads and everything. And especially as being Ambassador Kale's first, definitely throw some support and stuff his way as well. But moving along, now we have the 20% pack sale on the PC. This one. Doesn't mind. Mm hmm. Yeah. I thought well, it was Neela's. I thought it was too. But anyway. No, I, I want the next. Anyway, I'll roll with it all the same. <sighs> but, uh. Anyways, as far as our PC pack sales go, this is the packs such as the Temporal Agent Starter Pack, the Big Giant Temporal Agent Pack, the Delta Rising Pack, the Legacy of Romulus Starter Pack, and the Big Giant Legacy of Romulus Pack. Now these, you have to purchase them through the ARC website in order to obtain them for the sale prices. The sale started on the 30th, so that was just, I believe, 30. Thursday. And then they will be running until July the 5th. Now, some of these packs you get a pretty good bit of stuff with, especially the Delta Pack, the Big Giant Temporal Agent Pack, and even the Legacy of Romulus Pack has a pretty good collection of stuff in it. Now, if you're looking for Tier 6 ships, 
then I would advise the Delta Pack or one of the Temporals because you don't really get that much tier 6 wise in the Legacy Packs. Actually, I don't think you get any, if I'm not mistaken. But that was because mainly tier 5 was the max whenever the Legacy Pack was released. But um, as far as some of these packs go, I'll go ahead and actually pull up the pack in game if I could not fail at the C store. As far as um, the packs, I actually went out and bought the Big Giant Temporal pack whenever it came out. So, let me scroll down. I will find it somewhere in here. There it is. Alright, as far as what you get in this particular pack, you get a pretty good sizable amount of stuff, as you can see in the images there. You get the Constitution Class 2S ship. This is the low-level Tier 1 ship. You get the Temporal Science Vessel, the Daedalus. This is the Tier 2 leveling ship. You get the Temporal Escort Perseus. You get the Ranger Class, which is the Tier 5. In fact, that's the one we did our budget build series over uh, before this current one. You also get the Gemini Class. This is the Tier 6 version of the ship. Actually, no, that is not the Tier 6. That is... Um, that's Tier 4. That is Tier 4, my bad. I'm getting yeah. a little ahead of myself there. Then we have the Paladin Tier 6, the Nautilus Tier 6, the Sagittarius, Theseus, and the Multi-Mission Science Vessel Eternal Class. You also get the Kronos Tier 6 and the Ouroboros Class Tier 6. Now, we should mention that um, a good chunk of these ships are Starfleet only. However, the 31st century ships, such as the Multi-Mission Science Vessel, the being the Eternal Class, the Kronos Dreadnought Cruiser and the Ouroboros Raider are actually all faction ships. So regardless of if you're a KDF or if you're a Romulan, you will be able to use those ships and they are very, very potent, very, very powerful ships. Oh yeah. And as far as... They are beasts. Oh yeah. <laughs> As far as some of the other items you get, you'll get a 0718 Bridge Officer. This is the one from the movies, if people are wondering where he comes from. You can only get it once per character. You get three Temporal Agent uh, Tech Upgrades. These are unlockable once per account. You get six of the Temporal Operative Specialization Qualifications. Those are the things that allow you to train your Bridge Officers in the Temp Ops uh, Specialization. And you also get one TOS Advanced EV suit for Starfleet only. You get the Vulcan Ambassador, Tellerite Uniform, Andorian Uniform, Torn Uniforms, the Mirror Universe, and Command Tunics. These are all for TOS and Starfleet uh, characters only. You also get the title of Temporal Agent, Chrononaut, and Time Traveler. Now this pack of ships in and of its... or this pack here in and of itself... It ran me, I think, I don't remember if I, I don't think I got this on special, because I don't think they had that whenever they originally brought it out, but, um, anyways, I realize a lot of these packs can be kind of pricey sometimes, normally this one would run about, um, what's the normal price for this, Kirby? Because I can't I see the price. I think, uh... I want to say it's 120. It might be 160. Do you have the pack, Neil, or do you know? I have the pack. I have the pack. I'm, I can't remember. I to set my head what it was. Well, anyways, one of the big concerns that's um, going into this with a lot of people is that if they're going to buy a pack, you know, is it worth the money? As you can see, just from all the stuff that I read off, you get quite a bit of bang for your buck. The Tier 6 ships yeah. on their own, just the 31st centuries would run you 60 bucks if you bought the bundle. So you more than get your money back in terms of ships and other goodies that they throw in there. So this right. is... Oh, go ahead. Sorry, I did find the price, 130 Okay, 130 so yeah, you're... 130 yeah. You're making out like a bandit on this then compared to what these ships would normally cost. Yep. So this is a very, very great deal on everything. But, like I say, this is just one of the packs. If you're somebody that doesn't have 
that kind of money, the 130 to throw down, then to compare it to the Temporal Agent Starter Pack, you get some... Um, I'll read this really quick. You get the Constitution Class. This is the Tier 1. You get the Paladin Temporal Battle Cruiser, the two, uh, TOS Ripped Uniform, the 0718 Bridge Officer, and also the Temporal Agent title. So you still get a pretty decent amount of stuff and everything for a lot cheaper, but um, in my opinion, these packs are definitely worth it. But um, again, you will need to go through the ARC website to get the 20% off and everything. So 20% off the regular price, you're going to come out pretty good with that. But so. Yeah, instead of the normal $130, you're going to spend 104 Yep. So that's... So. That's actually less than the cost of two ship packs. So some of these ships, normally, you've got the 31st Centuries, so that's 60 bucks, and then say you bought one of the other packs... You're looking at another 60, so you're coming out really far ahead by getting yeah. that one. But anyways, I could harp on that forever as far as some of these packs. Definitely <laughs> check them out, definitely see what's in them and everything, and yeah, you won't be disappointed in my opinion. But coming up on the next thing, we have 20% off of everything in the C store. Coming off of uh, that... 20% pack too for PC. This is for every platform from Friday to Wednesday, the July 5th, 10 a.m. PST. Everything in the C store for everyone is going to be 20% off. Uh, also, when players get a players can get a ship upgrade token when they buy a tier. For Buy tier five ships. Oh, say you buy a tier five ship, you'll receive a free ship upgrade token. Only occurs when the tier five ship is bought for the first time on account. The claim for this token will appear in the promo promotions tab at the C store. Play a sex claim, receive the bound to account ship upgrade, and uh, then it will disappear from the promotions tab. Token stack, so if a player buys three to five ships at once, they'll be able to claim the promotion three times. Two five ship bundles will have the equivalent amount of token as the number of ships in the bundle. Example, buying dice and mega bundle will give players nine tokens. So yeah, definitely a very great time to invest. 20% off everything, that's absolutely nothing to sneeze at out there. But, uh, yeah, not really too much we can say about that. Uh, quick comments, anything, Kirby? Uh, now is definitely a good time to... Uh to buy things, let me tell you. If you have the Zen, definitely time to buy. You can beat the discount. And speaking of Zen and discounts, we have the Zen discounts on the PS4. Leave this as you Yes, Kirby. we do. Hey, did not want to come up. <laughs> okay. So, that's yeah, what she said. S4 has Zen discounts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, welcome to Pilot Review Show after dark. Try <laughs> <laughs> to keep focused here. Mm -hmm. So, basically, depending on how much Zen you are buying, you will get a scaling discount. Uh, 500 and 1,000 Zen, you'll get a 15% discount. 2,000 up to 5,300 Zen, you'll get a 20% discount. And 11,000 Zen, and I'm assuming anything over that, will give you a, well, actually, 11,000 is the highest you can do at a time. 
will give you a 25% discount. So the higher amount you buy, the more you will save. Alrighty. And that's pretty much it. Same time frame, June 30th until July 5th. I think they are going discount and promotion happy because of July 4th. And speaking of we discounts and done. stuff, we have the <laughs> Zen Charge bonus on the PC. That'd be you, Neela. And I believe that's you, actually. For me? Yeah, that's you. Oh, okay. Never mind then. Apparently, I'm all kinds of screwed up tonight, which not really sure that surprises <laughs> anybody, but. Anyways, from June the 30th until July the 5th on the PC, you will have a Zen Charge bonus. So, this is available only through certain payment processors, such as, obviously, if you use a credit card, such as Visa, MasterCard, American Express, Discover, that sort of thing. If you have PayPal, Skrill, Boa Compra, Exola, Pay Safecard, or Steam, those being some of the payment processors they accept then you will get a scaling bonus to the amount of Zen that you purchase. If it is a 500 or a 1000 Zen, you get a 20, or not a 20, but a 15% bonus. If you buy 2000 or 5000 Zen, you get a 20% bonus. And then if you buy either the 10,000 or 20,000 Zen, you will get a 25% bonus. And so to put that adding. in perspective, that will, and this, and this is... On. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say it's worth noting that's on top of the normal purchase bonuses you get for the higher level purchase. I was just about to say that, actually. Okay. Here you go. And, uh... Actually, Brad, it does benefit. And everything according to this. But uh, for Steam users, if you are having issues with getting your bonuses, then please let them know because that is a very huge deal and everything. But um, anyways, as far as those bonuses go, for me, I actually bought some Zen recently and everything just because I wanted to pick up a few things from the sale. And you can see, let me bring up my C store again. What would normally have only netted me 11,000 Zen ended up netting me 13,500. So there's a pretty good bit of stuff that you can get right now. So the bonus Zen comboed with the discount, you're essentially getting, at least at the $100 level, 45% additional purchasing power, if you want to consider that. That is not something to sneeze at at all. But finally, bringing us to our next and final big sale, you have the Key Ring Bundle for the PC. Alrighty. No. It's for all platforms. <laughs> is it for all platforms? It's for, yep. for all platforms. Okay, my bad. It's just listed yes, in the PC is. section then. Okay, that totally threw me because off. Because yes, it is. Down there, it will, in the blog... Someone in the blog just said for uh, all platforms. But I do believe it's it's for all platforms. I know the 20% off everything in the C store is all platforms, and the uh, and the Zen, the extra Zen stuff is all platforms. But you're right. I'm not actually sure about this. No, it is because it, uh, when they posted it to Facebook. Uh, they had it okay. on platform. Okay. All right. So, from Friday, June thirtieth, until Monday, July fifth, at ten a.m. Wednesday. Under time. What? Wednesday, July fifth. <sighs> can't words today. Can't read today. I don't think either of us can. <laughs> we have the key ring bundle. So this gives you 20 keys, plus an ultimate tech upgrade, which will take any piece, upgradable piece of equipment, 
instantly to mark 14 epic basically it's highest mark and quality zero so this is a good upgrade and uh, now it lists the price as 2250 then however because of the discount on everything at the moment I know this because I bought about six of them yeah in other words what she's saying she has so. no life I mean a lot of zen <laughs> hey I worked hard for that zen man flipping dilithium back and forth on the dilithium exchange she would you know mm-hmm I did. I'm still doing it right now as we speak to earn it all back. Yep. But, anyways, you can see the promo price right now. It's only the 1800 with the discount. Normally 2250 mm -hmm. as Kirby was saying. Now, one thing we would make note of is the keyring pack is the same price as what you would normally pay for two packs. So if you're going to buy at least 20 keys anyway... You may as well just buy this and get yourself a nice tech upgrade to go with it. Is if you're gonna buy that many keys, regardless, that is very well worth the money, in my opinion, to go that route. But yes. Anyways, I know the ultimate tech upgrades. As far as those go, I personally would not recommend using them on anything you don't already know what you're getting. So, if you wanted to, as a hypothetical, you could use them on a random Mark II weapon and everything. It's a, a very rare... You, you wouldn't know what you're going to get as far as the final mods or anything, so I would not recommend using it on something like that. But if you have something such as a Spiral Wave Disruptor, as a primary example then I would recommend using it on that because at least you know what you're going to get in that case. Like I say, right. just one thing we did want to point out. At least if it is ultra rare, yeah. you know what you're going to get. Um, yeah, I definitely wouldn't use this on anything that I don't know what I'm going to get. Now, for example, if I just bought the kinetic cutting beam, and I want to get that up to, you know, Mark 14 Epic. It comes out, say Mark 12, very rare, say I'm on a brand new tune, right? Um, on a fresh account. I know what that's going to get. So even though it's at 12, very rare, I can still pop that upgrade on it. And, uh, and get very easily get that up to 14 epping and that's actually a good use of it because those cutting beams are ridiculously expensive to upgrade indeed yeah yeah i say that is one thing we do like to mention because because of how expensive these upgrades are to acquire in terms of the zen and cash potentially that's involved we want to be sure players have all the information and everything out there but, um, anyways, that's pretty much our news articles and stuff. Now we can finally dive into this week's budget build. But, um, as far as this week goes, we're continuing our series with the Amari Class Smuggler's Heavy Escort and everything. We took a break from our series last week to show the budget shuttle build at the request of a viewer and everything. Now, the last time we featured this ship, we did the bare bones budget build for the ship. We showed what you could get and a possible way you could build the ship if you just picked it up. And if you remember, as far as our budget builds go, they assume in the case of um, the mid-range for this week that either you spent a lot of resources to get the ship what you have left is what uh, you're working with. Either you happened on the ship by just pure dumb luck, or however you came about the ship, 
We assume for mid-range you have about 30 million EC to work with as your maximum budget, and we also assume you have enough Dilithium to take one single item up to epic quality. And everything. But, um, as far as the changes to the ship go and everything, there's not really a lot that we did change. We did invest some EC and everything into it, but, um, as far as our weapons go, we did decide to take this down the Polaron route. Now, one thing I will make note of, and I believe I did the last time that we mentioned this as well, the ship itself is actually a 5-2 layout and everything. Whereas the builder here has it listed as a 4-2, so it is actually missing a, another weapon slot that should be there. Now, as far as the weapons go, we decided to take this mostly a dual bank build. Now, we're using the dual beam banks for the forward weapons. Now we do have the chronometric Polaron beam array up front and everything. This is mainly so we can actually benefit from the chronometric three-piece bonus everything. Otherwise um, this would be a dual bank. Sadly the chronometric set does not come in a dual bank variety. It comes in either a beam array or a dual heavy cannon which I um, kind of wish they'd do dual bank varieties but Anyways, as far as our aft weapons, we have two of the Polaron Omnis. We have a crafted Polaron Omni purchased from the exchange. And we have our chronometric Polaron Omni, which come from the Time and Tide mission. Now, I decided to take the chronometric Polaron Omni up to epic quality as our particular item this go around. But, um... As far as our shields, our engines, our deflector, warp core, that sort of thing. Now, we have been using the Jem'Hadar set with this and everything because the Jem'Hadar set is very nasty when paired with Polarons and whatnot. And it is also a very good free tank set aside from Soul Defense and everything and some of the others out there. Now, since the Jem'Hadar set does not come with a warp core, we had to source a warp core and the one that we used is the Temporal Phase Overcharged Core. I know it's a shocker that we're using that thing again. But, um, in seriousness, <laughs> the Temporal Phase Core, we use it a lot mainly because of the capacitor that it has. It is one of the best free warp cores that you can get out there. Everything. If you're familiar with the Delta Recruitment event some years ago, then you're familiar with a little device known as the Temporal Negotiator. And basically what that device did was it allowed people to cut their bridge officer cooldowns in half for the duration of the device, and that is essentially what this does in the form of a warp core capacitor. It's a very potent thing. You get that from the butterfly mission, and it's very great. Now, the other big thing that we had is the heavy weapons thing that you get here. And that is... Um, I'm brain farting for a minute. But anyway, the heavy weapons thing is the one of the new things that they've got. This is the Slam Shot Magnetic Artillery Weapon. And everything, but... Um, so, very decent little weapon, I think. And as far as the devices and whatnot, um, one device in particular we always recommend is the Subspace Field Modulator. It is a very nice device that comes from the Skirmish Mission, it gives a nice defensive on use, however it does debuff you by a minus 400 to protonic damage, so it can in some cases be a bit of a double-edged sword. Now, we hadn't been mentioning the protonic debuff that it does because not enough enemies used protonic damage to really warrant saying anything in my opinion. But since some more enemies have been using a few more Protonic-based abilities, it is something we do want to mention, and we want people to be aware of. As far as a second device, I didn't really slot one in the build, because I usually consider devices personal preference. But um, if you have a red matter capacitor, or maybe you've got the energy amplifier batteries, anything like that, you might could use there. As far as our engineering consoles go, we've got two slots we can use. And we used the piezoelectric focuser that comes from the Lucari rep. 
It's a very nice console, which is essentially a free tactical console to Polaron when used outside of your tactical slots, of course. Now this particular console gives a nice boost to Polaron. It also, I believe, gave a little bit of turn rate and everything with it as well. I'd have to look at the exact console before I could give exact numbers. Then, for our other engineering console, we have the Zero Point Energy Conduit. And this one comes from the Romulan Rep. Gives a nice little chunk of crit chance as well as some other nice buffs. For science, we have our Assimilated Module. Gives a good bit of crit chance as well as crit severity and some other nice buffs. Then, for our final three science consoles, we have the Restorative Particle Focusers. These are the Drain X times 2s from the Crenum Science Lab and everything. Now the restorative versions will pop potentially off of our healing abilities, give a nice exotic damage boost. And we went with the Drain X times 2s mainly because we wanted to buff our Polaron Drain. And as far as our tactical consoles, we do have the Chronometric Capacitor. This is from the Time and Tide mission as well. Gives some nice benefits to Polaron. Then, for our final four tactical consoles, there aren't any missions that grant a Polaron-specific console, so we had to source the plus beams. And these come from the Terminal Expanse in the Yesterday's War arc. You will need to complete all of the prior missions in order to actually see that one. As far as the skills go, kind of standard as far as the tank builds you've seen me do. We've got some improved hull capacity, as well as some hull restoration, a little bit of shield restoration, improved shield cap. We maxed out our advanced energy training. We've got the improved EPS flow for extra power. Point in impulse expertise. We did pick up improved control X and drain X. We also picked up advanced targeting expertise to offset some of the penalty to fall and other firing modes. We've got defensive maneuvering maxed out. We also have our hull plating maxed out and everything. We have the improved shield hardness. We've maxed out weapon amplification and specialization. And keep in mind these were changed with season 13. With weapon specialization you get a 4% bonus instead of 6 and with the amplification you get a 40 percent instead of a 20. Then with the offensive and defensive tuning we get a bit more power. Improved exotic particle gens. Then we also have advanced long-range target sensors to get rid of some of the drop-off penalty to weapons. Then you have either your choice of shield pin or hull pin in this case. It really depends on what you're going for. Kirby prefers the hole pin, whereas I personally prefer shield pin. There really is no right or wrong answer to which one you take and everything. It's just a matter of do you value bypassing armor more or do you value getting through their shields more? It really depends on which one you like best. I suddenly have the urge to sing the I Am Right song. She would. <laughs> but yeah. In seriousness though folks, like we're saying, there is no right or wrong answer to this. It really is a matter of what you prefer. You can make arguments for either one, but as long as you have at least one of them, then I would say you're doing pretty good. Yeah. Then we have warp core potential to pick up a little bit of extra power, and then finally we have the shield mastery and shield absorption, because it does negate a few very nice critical hits and everything. It is very nice to have still, even though the damage reflection isn't really that great anymore. For our spec, we had Pilot and Intel. Pilot mainly for some of the defensive abilities it gives. Intel, I felt, also plays very well with this ship, with some of the abilities it has also. And everything. But, um, moving along, we have our Bridge Officer Powers. Now this is a hybrid ship, meaning it can take advantage of two different uh, specializations. In this case we have a Lieutenant Commander Universal Intel seat. We made this an engineer. We went with Override Subsystems 1, Reverse Shield Polarity 1, and Emergency to Weapons 3. Now for our Commander Tactical seat, 
we went with a Attack Team 1, an Attack Pattern Beta 1, a Fall 3, and an Omega 3 in this instance. For our Lieutenant Tactical Pilot, we decided to change it up a little bit from last time, and instead of a Beam Overload 1, we're using a Chemocyte Laced Weaponry 1. And then we also have, I believe that is Hold It Together, if I am not mistaken? Yeah, Hold Together 1. Yeah. Yep, hold together one. I still, I don't use pilot as often, so I kind of suck at remembering icons and everything, but um, that aside. <laughs> then for our instant engineering, we have a engineering team one. For lieutenant commander science, we have a psi team one. This purges certain pesky debuffs, such as subnucleonic based effects, and also gives a little bit of uh, shield restoration. Everything to us, or shield healing. Then we have Hazard Emitters, which purges things such as Plasma Fire, as well as a Heal Over Time. And then finally, we have our Gravity Well 1, which is a nice little control power. And everything help group those enemies up, and give them a nice little kick in the pants, too. But, so... Um... <laughs> then, once we come to our traits, this is where we actually made the biggest amount of changes. And everything. And we did decide to take the ship overall down the tanking route, more so, and everything. I wanted to kind of turn it into a tank because I don't really see a lot of people tanking in escorts and everything. And it's something I do from time to time, and I want to show people that you can do that. But, so. Uh... Anyways, as far as traits go, we have Accurate. This is to kind of offset the penalty to fall and other firing modes. Then we also have our Beam Barrage, which comes from the Beam R&D School. We always like to assume that you've leveled one, maybe two, R&D crafting schools with the character. And one of the ones in this case you chose to level was the Beam R&D School. You get that trait at level 15 beams. Then you get the Beam Training to increase your beam damage. You also have Elusive to increase your defensive value. Then we have the Career Specific, uh, career specific trait. Mm. Allergies are a pain this year. But, so. Uh... Anyways, as far as the Career Specific trait goes, this is the one for Engineers. If you are not an Engineer, you'll swap in either the Tactical or Science uh, Career Specific trait. Everything we usually, or I've been usually just leaving it in the default mode. In this case, the builder defaults to engineers, so that's why we're using that career specific trait. As far as the other traits go, one of the ones we swapped in was Biotech Patch. It improves the effectiveness of all uh, hull restoring abilities. It is a very nice thing to have as far as tanking goes and whatnot. Yes. Now, we also have, <coughs> oh, excuse me, we also have Pattern Recognition, which is, um, it grants some extra defense and some shield hardness, can stack up to four times while you're in combat, that is about, I think, 6% to both, if I did the I math in my head so, right, yeah. I think it's 1.5% right. per stack, yeah, 6% total, about right. so very potent ability, then we have the point blank shot. The closer you are to the target, the more damage you will do, up to a certain maximum, that is. Then we also have ablative shell. This is a very great tank trait. I would recommend anybody to get this. It's um, Whenever you take a certain amount of damage, you get a large heal over time and damage resistance effect. So it is very, very potent. As far as our starship traits go, we have three in particular that uh, we used. We have the best defense trait. Attack patterns grant a whole healing buff along with normal effects. We have the improved pedal to the metal. And everything from our pilot tree. We also have our improved predictive algorithms from Intel. And whatnot. Then for our space reps, we have the advanced engines. And everything. Just cause a little bit of extra turn rate, a little bit of extra speed is never a bad thing. We have advanced targeting systems for free severity. We have the chrono capacitor array to bring the bridge officer cooldown times down a little bit. And then finally we have precision to increase our critical hit chance. Which is also very good. 
For our active reps, we have the Anti-Time Entanglement Singularity and everything. This is still a very decent power to have even today after the changes with Season 13. We have Biomolecular Shield Generator. This is the big, poofy, green, spherical shield you see a lot of people drop an ISA and other cues when a lot of damage is going out. Everything. Then we also have our Quantum Singularity Manipulation. Now, the combination that myself and Kirby like to use, as well as I believe Neela and uh, some of the others on the show, is um, we drop our Quantum Singularity Manipulation first. That buffs our science stats. We use any other exotic boost that we have, and then we follow up with our Anti-Time Entanglement Singularity and any other abilities such as Grav Well, maybe Charged Particle Burst, or whatever it is that we're using. So, very yes. potent combo. Finally, a personal favorite of mine is the Deploy Sensor Interference Platform. If you're tanking, you need to buy yourself just a couple of extra seconds to wait on a heal or to get a heal off, then that little satellite will taunt off of you and hopefully buy you the time that you need. But so. If you're looking for DPS and everything, some of the changes that we've made aren't really geared towards that. Like I said, I wanted to tank the uh, tank. I wanted to take this down the tanking route and everything, so that uh, people can see kind of that you actually can tank with an escort and everything and whatnot. But um, also because I didn't really see a lot of tank builds with this ship. But um. As far and as, of course, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, of course, everybody knows the old adage, you can't DPS while you're dead, or you don't yep. do damage while you're dead. So, in an indirect way, it might increase your DPS if because Maybe. it lends to survivability. So, if you were dying a lot with the previous build, and you make these changes, you might see a slight increase in your DPS. Yep. But um, they don't, the changes that we made don't directly affect or increase your DPS. Yes. But, um, like me personally, I am one of the kind of people I prefer to tank. I like to be in the midst of things. I like to have a little bit of survival. That's kind of a holdout from my World of Warcraft days where I hardcore played as a Death Knight tank and everything was always right in the middle of stuff, had a lot of survival, but anyway. As far as the build itself goes, I include everything in the notes, I tell you where you can get it, I include some of the costs for you guys, and everything. As, star as far as the lithium investment, you're looking at 52,500 to lithium, and everything, and that's after we've took our item to epic. Then, as far as the EC costs and everything, I calculate out what everything was purchased for, and we came in close to our 30 million EC limit. We spent 27,700,000 EC as far as total. Now the total amount of build time you're looking at is 7 days, and that is purely due to dilithium refinement limits. That is, of course, assuming you're using a single character. But, um, like I say, not really too many changes that we made this time around going from mid-range to, uh, or from bare bones to mid-range. We did pick up some money abilities and everything. That's where most of our focus went to and whatnot. But, um, any comments, thoughts from the panel about anything? Not really. I mean, I helped you make the, uh, make the changes, so... Yep. Yeah. Nilo, you live over there? I think he's conscious. Won't swear to it. I think we lost him. Sir Nila, art thou present? Anyway, I'm gonna... Moving along. I think he ninja. I think he did. But, so. Um, anyways, as far as our budget build goes, that's pretty much what we've got for you guys this week and everything. Next week, um, we will be continuing our series. We're going to be taking this to the high end and everything and show what the finished build might possibly look like with this ship. 
and everything, but, um... Anyways, um, if you have budget builds you'd like us to do and everything, feel free to let us know and everything. Tell us, you know, hey, I want this ship, I want this energy type, I want to make it a tank, I want to make it a DPS, I want to make it a healer, or whatever you're looking to do with the ship, and, you know, be sure to tell us, you know, hey, I've got this much EC to work with and everything, and, you know, any other conditions and stuff you've got, and some... Um, We'll see what we can't come up with for you guys and everything. Because that's mainly why we do the budget builds, is to give you some ideas of what you can do with limited resources. But moving along to the bugs corner, we do have some stuff this week and everything for you guys. Now, this involves the Kobayashi Maru, some stuff that I had seen reported and everything, is that people were saying that... Um, once you got to the siege wave, the enemies were spawning so fast, so many of them, and using so many abilities that they were actually lagging out the server, in some cases. And lagging out the match to the point nobody could really do anything. So, yes. if you're seeing that, then please let them know that it's a very big deal, because if it's lagging out the instance, lagging out the server, they're going to want to know that, and everything. But um, that's the major big thing because it is prevalent on an ongoing event with such a limited time. I wanted to kind of ask you guys, like I say, if you see any bugs at all and everything, I know I only mention a very select few during the bugs corner segment and whatnot, but if there's bugs that um, you know of that maybe you've not seen people talking about, you want the devs to know about, you know, feel free to come on to the forums and everything for uh, the bug reporting. That's why they're there, so people can report bugs. Console players, you now have your own separate forums now from the PC guys and everything. PC and everything, you know, regardless of what platform you're on, feel free to come on there tell them, you know, hey, this is the issue that I'm seeing and everything. This is how I get it to happen. You know, if you've got photos, if you've got video and everything, that's even better because that's just that much more information we've got to work with. You know, if you're in game, you know, feel free if you know my at tag to, you know, drop me a message, say hey, you know, um, this is a bug that's going on, all that stuff. Feel free to contact one of the show hosts and everything. If um, you know you know their at tags as well, tell them you know, hey, can you pass this along to Dark Blade so he can get it to the devs, and we will get it turned in. The devs don't like bugs any more than you or I do. They want to get stuff fixed. They want the game to work right and everything. And there's only so much that they can catch on their own. There's only so much that I can catch and everything as well. That's why yes. we ask you guys to turn this stuff in as well. And we'll go to him and go, Chris, we broke it. They love breaking my brain. <laughs> we do. But... Um, we do. Anyways, that's the major stuff I've got for the Bugs Corner this week and whatnot. But moving along, we have this week with the Teacher's Corner, the Teacher's Summer Corner. Event Sandcastles. Get away, Teacher Kirby. Yes. I, I was channeling my inner child. Now, um, a lot of people don't know that the Sandcastle, the ability to make sandcastles, is still in the Summer Event. It's not a event in the rotation but it is still there and it is it's actually quite easy and fast to do and you get 20 favors for it um, now that it's not in the rotation you're not fighting to find a uh, a bucket or an area to do your your building in but uh, so I do show from the very beginning um, you know because there are stages as you complete the first time you do it you'll only be able to do a very basic thing but um, so I show from the first time you do it all the way up to um, to someone who's gone through and and done sandcastles at least five times and, and unlocked everything 
and the whole bit and uh, and Gornalicious channeled her inner Godzilla <laughs> and that's all I'll say oh lord yes so so check it out comments question totally something you would do <laughs> yes it is <laughs> But seriously, though, I am yes, yes it is. I am glad that you put that out there because that is that was one of my favorite events on Ryzen. Glad to see that it's actually still there and everything. Yeah. I mean, I liked building the sandcastles. I did. The only problem was that if you did it during the bonus time, you couldn't find a bucket you couldn't find an area. I mean, people were fighting for them because there just weren't enough. Indeed. You know, I mean, that was the problem. So, now that it's not part of the rotation, there are buckets of plenty. <laughs> See, it does kind of suck that it's not part of the rotation, but, you know, I, at least we could still do it. It's still a nice little thing. Some quick, easy favors. A fun little event. But um. Yeah. I think it would be fine as something to put in the rotation if they added more buckets around the island. Yep. More buckets, more spawns, you stuff know. like that, yeah. Well, it takes, what, two minutes? Two and a half minutes to do a you know, to do a sandcastle, so, you know, yep. yeah, I mean, definitely they need, bottom line, they need more buckets, so. But, so. Uh, anyways, we will have a link to Teacher's video, you guys can check that out and everything, I highly encourage you to do yes. that, especially if it's your first time with the sandcastle event and everything, she's... Got pretty much everything you need to know in the video. Shows you how to do everything. But so. Yes, I do. Anyways, folks, that's pretty much what we've got for a show for this evening and whatnot. There was a lot of stuff to get through and everything. Some of the things we're going to have to leave for the notes for you guys just because of how much is actually there, such as the bundle that we mentioned at the start of the show and whatnot. Also, a proud partner with the Kurtang Pirate Radio and everything. You should definitely be checking out those guys and whatnot. They're a pretty cool bunch and everything. Also a shout out to our other good friends at the Temporal Armada. Be sure to check out their radio program as well. And everything. They're a pretty cool bunch of dudes. Both uh, radio stations kind enough to sponsor us. And everything. Also, if you would like to see us at uh, Las Vegas, we still have our GoFundMe and everything and we plan to attend and whatnot. If you'd like to see more shenanigans from the convention floor, maybe some more impromptu interviews like a uh, teacher was able to get last year, then yep. we do have our GoFundMe that you can help support us by um, helping us cover some of the expenses and everything. It is uh, not required by any means. Any support you want to give is great. If you don't have cash and it's just spreading the word around, then every little bit helps and every little bit is appreciated. Because without you guys, we wouldn't have a show. Everything would just be four weirdos sitting on the internet blabbing all day, essentially. <laughs> but um, also, if you'd like us to help with your piloting or you have budget builds, feel free to let us know. If you want us to help with your piloting and to help improve, then feel free to submit you know, some videos to us so we can kind of see what you're doing, offer some advice and some help that way. And everything and uh, tell us what you're wanting to do or are you wanting to be a better tank healer dps you know whatever you're looking to do and we'll help you out as best we can but anyways folks for now this is the pilot review show and we're warping out of here bye